One Piece. This is Juan. <laughs> Juan. <laughs> uh, this is One Piece chapter 1032, Odin's Beloved Blade. Uh, last we left off, uh, lots of shit was happening. Big Mom is going berserk, doing her thing. Uh, there's a big fire thing going down. Uh, Drake and Ki- uh, Drake and um, what's his face? Apu are all fighting, trying to get an alliance going. Uh, the numbers are now chasing Yamato. A-, a lot of chaos is going on. Uh, we open this chapter with Apu trying to chase down Yamato and try to convince her, convince him to join uh, the alliance real fast. Uh, and Drake is just subsequently chasing Apu. Uh, so you know that's that's fun. Uh, the giant number known as Fuga is following Yamato, kind of like a like a happy puppy. <laughs> He's just like Fuga, <laughs> you know. Um, Yamato shows familiarity. She seems to know the he seems to know the number pretty well. Uh, right, which doesn't put a hole in a theory that we talked about last time per se, but it kind of loses a lot of it. You think? I mean, they know each other already. Well, they could know each other because she knows. Well, it's not that like, right. It, it's th- they they still could know each other because of what happened. Mm-hmm. But it could just be that it could be a coincidence. Kaido owns the numbers, and she lives with Kaido because that's her dad. Yeah. Uh, hey, that's fair enough. Um, I'm still subscribing to the theory. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I mean that could still be the case. I'm sticking to my and some other random One Piece theorists' guns. Uh. Go on, P. Go on, P. Okay, uh, so as uh, Yamato is running, falling down from the sky and landing on Fuga are Robin and Brooke being chased by the CP0 goons. Um, they're just diving down like Mission Impossible style, hands completely like at their side. Uh, and right- Full pursuit. Yeah, full pursuit. <laughs> this guy's still, I don't know, I remember that All like... Time. One of them has to hold up the mask, and I wonder if he's still doing that, or he just pasted it on his face already. Yeah, you know how it is. No, no, he holds it the whole time. Yeah? So he's fighting one hand. Yeah, everything he does is one hand, essentially, <laughs> which makes him epically strong. Very cool. Uh, but in any case, they're, Robin and Brooke are getting ready to square up with the CP0, because they're not going to let up. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Meanwhile, the little thing that um, what's his face created emerges the fire beast that um, what's his face? Damn, there's so many characters in this arc that even I'm like blanking on names. Um, but yeah, it comes down. It actually scorches the CP zero agents. They're like, ow, <laughs> and uh, it continues to fall down. This is where I, I, I thought that these CP zero guys are done after this because. The whole point of this thing is that they it incinera- incinerates everything it touches. Um, yeah, but they're durable, so. Yeah, they are CP0, I suppose. Um, <laughs> they'll probably just burn their clothes or something. Yeah. It's like, ah, my cool bowler hat. Probably burn their good moods, too. Yeah. I mean, they were already, they were already so pretty. As physical, actual, real damage goes, probably light, not much. Light work. You know, CP0. Yeah, one-handed fighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brooke seems to dismount off of the the number along with Robin, um, and they take the opportunity, being that uh, the CP zero is on the other side of the flames, to run away. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side of the fr- flames, CP zero is getting uh, recollected after suffering a, a couple burns, and they hear some clicking in the distance. Uh, Apu has these snail cameras that he's just snapping constant pictures, yeah. <laughs> uh, like a paparazzi, and he's just talking about how like uh, Morgan would pay like a ton of money for the pictures he's taking of CP Zero at Wano. I like how he's taking the pictures and he's like, ah, bah, 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 bah. I thought he was like trying to he's, like trying to kill him real quick. No, but he was just taking pictures. That was so he funny. Said, ah, bah, 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 bah. Uh, so the CP zero guy is like, "Don't get over your head," and he does the deadly poke thing that CP cipher pole agents do. Um, and uh, Apu seems to actually be down for the count. Uh, and I was like, "Whoa!" They took down Apu in one strike. 
Uh, Man, no. 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 Oh, snap. No, <laughs> oh, damn. Um, but, yeah, uh, he, the CP0 guy turns his attention to Drake, and he's like, do you think we don't know who you are? And then x Drake is like, well, why don't you start coming up with excuses then? And he goes, inconvenient truths are meant to be erased. He comes in with the poke. But then Apu catches him fucking slipping with a big boom explosion from the floor. Surprise, motherfucker. Uh, It was pretty damn cool. I- I'm not going to lie. I was like, yeah, let's go, Apu. Uh, cool. Yeah, I'm glad you. he didn't get knocked out just like that. He's supposed to be a really strong. Yeah, he's a supernova. Uh, But yeah, I was actually like pretty excited. I was like, damn, good move. Um. This guy falls back because he just got exploded in his face. Um, and it turns out Apu blocked most of the attack, it seems, using armament hockey. Uh, he and x Drake bicker for a second, and then they decide on um, forming a temporary alliance to take down these CP0 goons. Uh, and their battle starts to begin. Uh, not the pair I expected to take down the CP0 folks, but uh, pretty cool nonetheless. I'm glad that even like the supernova captains are getting a little bit of an individual battle. Um, yeah, man. Especially Axe Drake being a whole dinosaur. Yeah, he went full dinosaur for this. He's not holding back. No, oh, he's not the only one going full dinosaur though. Yeah. <laughs> mean. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of uh, of which, uh, we cut back to the battle with Zoro and King. Uh, we see King's new like a, a new technique from King, where he pulls his like crest back his pterodactyl crest he pulls it back so like long that even his jaw you start to see it like (laughs) stretch up too and then he lets it go like a slingshot and his whole head just crashes into the rock behind zoro and like decimates basically the whole area uh it's pretty impressive (laughs) i guess it was the Weird ass technique, I uh, the probably the weirdest technique I've ever seen, and that's saying something for One Piece. I feel, um, yeah. So <laughs> Zoro's just like, damn, oh, head yeah, he's a damn. That's like a laser beam. How do you even block that? And then King says, the pterodons of the ancient past hunted their prey just like this. <laughs> and Zoro's like, damn. <laughs> I had no this idea. This is the most this is the most one piece fight I've ever seen in my life. Listen, Zor- Oda has done this a few times with like the dinosaur Yeah, and you know what? I'm not gonna lie, it never gets old. I laughed I laughh every single time. Old. Just make them cool, Oda. Come on. Stop making <laughs> them do this stupid shit. <laughs> no, Queen being an actual snake <laughs> instead of a brontosaurus. Dude, that <laughs> shit was so funny. The way that they just like the one piece characters just believe that this is how shit used to be (laughs) for dinosaurs. It's always so funny to me. Um, Zoro also asks, I'm I'm guessing the flame on your back is a pterodon feature as well. And King is like, (laughs) it's not. And Zoro's actually surprised. Um, He didn't have to tell him that, but he did. Yeah. He's just like, no, you're wrong. This is just me. This is me as a person. (laughs) Uh, so Zoro tries to use his uh, his three sword style black rope dragon twister, and uh, he put um, King puts his dukes up and he just basically guards the whole thing. Um, nobody's been able to block this attack. This is like a pretty big attack for Zoro, um, and apparently it's because that not only does King have just like the the pure durability that all of these like ancient zoan types or mythical zone types have. generally have yeah. yeah he seems to have his own level of intrinsic durability within himself uh unique to his uh race i imagine of the lunarians specifically if, uh, if that's to be believed um but he goes like he just uh comes down from his pterodon form and he goes fine i'll give you a sword fight he pulls out his giant sword and starts sword fighting with zoro Zoro's just trying to figure out how to even fight this guy because everything he does is just pretty good answer to whatever Zoro is able is able to do. Uh, King even knocks him back uh, f- for like a few miles uh, through some rocks, and he lands on the ground. And as Zoro's just like lying there, he starts to hear the uh, a certain sound, uh, the sound of a shamisen, 
And at that point, that's when the uh, what is that? It's an instrument. Yeah, it's, yeah, the it's inter- a Japanese it's, instrument. Yes, yeah, the inter- instrument we'll see momentarily. Um, and upon hearing this, uh, the Enema Sword oh. starts to starts to hiss. And the next page, all you see is Zoro going ah as uh, the Enma is uh, sucking all of the hockey out of Zoro's arm. Uh, this happened once before. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he's like, Enma is... And we cut over to Orochi, who's just chilling still. He's still like hiding out. Um, and he also hears the Shaman Sen, uh, which indicates that Zoro's... It's probably his observation hockey that's like allowing him to hear the Shaman Sen himself or it could also be enma highlighting it for him oh yeah i mean that's possible uh enma seems to have his mind of its own and it's hot its own version like source of hockey to it so that's very well possible um but anyway he's uh orochi hears the shamisen as well but the reason being he's actually like right the next room over from it uh, he opens the door, and who's there but the Kumurasaki uh, Hiyori. Uh, she's... Kumurasaki? Kumurasaki! <laughs> uh, and she's there. She's the one playing the shamisen. And uh, Orochi is actually super stoked to see her. Um, because this is like a way back in Wano detail. But uh, Denjiro uh, basically faked her death to a degree to Orochi. So... He he thought she was dead the entire time, but uh, she was just in the background with Zoro the whole time. Uh, and Orochi's just like, oh, my God, I'm so glad to see you. Have I died or gone to heaven? I cannot forget you. And uh, Hiyori says, neither can I, my lord. I am always by your side. And that's pretty much where the chapter ends with Orochi just being super stoked that uh, Hiyori's alive at the moment. Uh, kind of a weird ending, I guess. Uh, yeah. To uh, an otherwise pretty stellar chapter, I had a great time reading this. Um, I, I wonder. Uh, I'm. I think uh, there's obviously a connection being that uh, Hiori is Odin's daughter. That uh, the Enmans, the Enma Sword, is uh, responding directly to uh, the the Shamisen. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I thought this uh, was a fun one. Uh, King's ability is just so fucking goofy and fun as usual. Uh, the action has been pretty fun. I mean, he looks really cool too. He he wrote his he his style reminds me of Katakuri, but he looks different enough. Yeah, you know, uh, he reminds me of like um, what's his face um from Dress Rosa, uh, the guy who uh, like could pop. And stuff like his that was his ability he popped things i think it started with a uh, gallius i think his name is I'm, why am i forgetting one piece characters i'm a disgrace <laughs> of a of a one piece fan but um yeah they they have like a kind of a similar uh get up but anyway i i don't really have a whole ton to say about this chapter it was just a, a ton of action uh do you have a? Do you guys I have any thoughts? Out these lives and life characters from One Piece. I think it's so awesome. Hmm? I said I really enjoy like the larger than life characters. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, there are actually a couple of theories going around on what might happen with Zoro. Ooh. Ooh. So there's there are two routes that this could go. Uh, some people theorize oh. that. Yeah, well, yeah. There, there are theories that um, Enma is was never Zoro's sword, and it probably will never be Zoro's sword, and he'll have to give it up, much like Sanji gave up his raid suit. Um, the second theory is is that Zoro uh, will find a way to kind of dispel Odin's will from that sword and make it his own that way. Wow. So... Those are the the two theories. It's either Zoro gives up Enma, or he, um, or he makes it his own. Because right now the sword is clearly not his sword. Yeah. Um, Odin being in that sword is not going to be compatible with him using a golf forwards. What you're trying to say? 
Yeah, because right now it seems like it's linked to uh, his daughter. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, because it only reacted that way when it heard her shamisen or whatever, or felt her presence to an extent. Yeah, I would say it would be the latter. I uh, I think uh, Zoro has like had that moments before where when he first got like one of the swords in um, in uh, Rogue Town, he had to like kind of learn how to use that one as well because one of them was like particularly strong willed of its own. So there's been a history of Zoro needing to conquer certain swords uh, in the past. So I think that's more the arc that's going to happen now. But it could very well go the first way. But my money is on maybe he learns how to kind of like dominate the sword and become make it become the master of the Odin sword. Uh, I I would think I think like at some point that Odin like King's going to try to do something. But that level of hockey that's within the sword right now is just going to like slash at King and it's going to cut him pretty bad. Uh, That's where I think that's going. But I don't know. I don't know what, uh, what they're gonna do with in this regard. Maybe it maybe it will yeah. just be linked to Hiori. Like I don't know where they're. Gonna... Yeah. Um. But in any case, uh, I don't I don't really know where the next chapter goes from here. Uh, it's a, uh, it's very fun though to to imagine. I'm that. hoping we get a very long flashback about Homer Masaki. Yeah, we haven't uh, seen a ton of her. We've seen like a little bit of her past in uh, like through Kawamatsu because he's the one who raised her um, after the Odin castle fell. So maybe there will be a little bit more regarding uh, Hiyori. Yeah, I can't wait. 